Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. In today's tutorial, we're making a cute casual crochet top filled with texture via sedge stitches, a snazzy collar, and a comfort forward fit. Basically, all the things you could want in a t-shirt. Speaking of, if you're looking for crochet tea goodness, or anything else for that matter, you're in the right place. We have hundreds of modern crochet tutorials and patterns with even more dropping weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado. For this pattern, any category for yarn will work, but I used a total of 255 grams of yarn and that's 575 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5.5 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you could live anywhere, where would it be, and why. Now, as much as I would love to see different places, I actually don't think that I would like to live anywhere else. I'm very, very happy with where I currently live. Details for the giveaway down below. We are using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size and I'll explain that to you in the video. So let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Then take our 5.5mm hook and start off by making a chain that is in multiples of 3 that starts at the top of our shoulder down to where like the bottom of this top to be, so at your waist or your hips. I'd like for mine to be just about where my waist is, so I'm going to start by making a chain that is 14 and a half inches or 37 centimeters, and that's going to be a chain of 51 for me. Now I actually already have this portion all finished up, so I'm just going to be doing a small sample size with you. Now that we have our chain, we're going to get started on our first row, which is going to be a sedge stitch row. So start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain one. Now that chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. And now we're going to do our first sedge stitch. Now the first sedge stitch of every row is going to be a half double and double crochet into that first stitch. So starting with the yarn over, we're going to insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook. So bring your hook down and into that chain. We're going to yarn over, pull through for three loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through all three. That is our half double crochet completed. Then we're going to do a double crochet. So yarn over. Into that same chain, we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through for three loops on our hook again, but for our double crochet, we're going to yarn over, pull through the first two loops, then yarn over, pull through the next two loops. And that is going to be how we always do our first sedge stitch of every row. Now getting started on the following one, what we're going to do is skip the following two stitches. So we're going to skip one, skip two. Into the next chain, we're now going to do a single half double and double crochet all into that same stitch. So skip one, skip two, into the next, insert with a single crochet, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Next is a half double crochet, so yarn over. Into that same chain, pull through, pull through three, that's our half double. And then into that same chain again, insert pull through two, pull through two, and that is our double crochet. Now from here we're going to do this sedge stitch set until we all have two stitches left, so let's do the next one together. So after we finish up every Suzette stitch set, we're always going to skip the following two stitches, because that half double counts as the following stitch, and then that double counts as a stitch after that. If we work into any of the two following stitches, we will accidentally be increasing. So we're going to skip one, skip two, into the next with a single, into the same with a half double, and then once more into the same with a double crochet. 
and that is our set stitch set. We're going to continue this until we all have two chains left, and since I just have a few left, I'm going to do the following one with you as well. So after we finish the set, skip one, skip two, into the next with a single, into the same with a half double, then into the same again with a double crochet. Continue doing this set until we all have two chains left. And then once we have our two chains left, all we're going to do is single crochet into that last chain. So we have one, two left to end this row. So into that last chain, we're going to insert with just one single crochet. And we are now complete. And it's basically just going to be a repeat of this row. So let's just get started on the following one together to make sure we all have it down. Let's all chain one, flip our work, and that chain one doesn't count as a stitch. That's our turning chain. Now to do our first Suzette stitch set, we're always going to start it with a half double crochet and double crochet just into that first stitch. So yarn over, into that first stitch with a half double, same first stitch with a double crochet. Then after that set, we're going to skip one, skip two, into the next, which should be a single crochet from our previous row's sedge stitch set to get the texture that we want. We're going to insert with a single, also with a half double, and also with a double crochet. Let's do one more of these sets together. We're going to skip one, skip two, into the next with a single, into the same with a half double, and into the same with a double crochet. And continue doing this until we all have two stitches left. Now we're at the end of our row two. We should all have two stitches left. So what we're going to do is just single crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. And that's it. So far, each of our rows should have the same amount of stitches as chains that we made when we got started on this portion. But once we have this, we're just going to continue to do our sedge stitch row with no increases and no decreases until we have a portion that can reach two inches past the tip of our shoulder in until we reach the base of our neck. Then I'll meet you back right after an even number row so we can get started on the neckline from there. We are back. Our shoulder portion is complete. Now I have a total of 14 rows. My width is roughly four and a half inches or 11 centimeters. And now from here, we're gonna get started on the neckline. So first things first, we're all gonna start by inserting our stitch marker into the sixth stitch from the top that's opposite from where working yarn is. And that should be just about an inch or two centimeters. And this is going to be the same for every size. Then what we're all going to do from here, since we should all be along the bottom, is make our way all the way up with our sedge stitches, leaving the last five stitches before our stitch marker, and then I'll meet you back so we can decrease together. We are back. We've made our way all the way up with our sedge stitches, and we should all have one, two, three, four, five stitches left right before our stitch marker. Now what we're all going to do from here is a decrease of three double crochets. So we're all going to yarn over. We are still going to be skipping the following two stitches as if we normally would right after we finished up a set and then start our decrease into that following stitch. So skip one, skip two. Into that next, which should be our third to last stitch, we're going to insert, pull through. Into that next stitch, which is our second to last, pull through. And then into that next stitch, which is our last, pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through the first four loops giving us two loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through two. And that's it. From here, we're gonna chain one and flip our work. Now for this portion, every even number row is not gonna have any increases or decreases. So make your way all the way down with our same sedge stitch that we've been doing. Then when we reach the end of the row, chain one, flip your work, and then start off our following sedge stitch row, leaving the last five stitches just so we can decrease together once more. We are back and our first one, two, almost three rows for our neckline are complete. Now after that third row, we should have all left one, two, three, four, five stitches left so we can do our decrease together once more. And that's gonna be done the same way as our first row. So all together, yarn over. Skip the following two stitches and then into the next, which is our third to last, insert pull through. Into that next, which is our second to last, pull through. Into our last, Pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through the first four loops to get two. Then yarn over, pull through two. And that's it. From here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows until this portion that we have can reach over to mid chest. Then I'll meet you back right after an even numbered row, so along the bottom, and then we can do our middle row together from there. Alrighty, so I am back. 
my neckline is now complete. I now have a total of 22 rows and my width is roughly 8 inches or 20 centimeters. Now from here, we're all going to do our middle row. So from where we're at, we're all going to start by inserting our stitch marker into any stitch from the top that is in multiples of three, the length that we'd like for our slit to be. Now I'd like for mine to be just about an inch or two centimeters, so I'm gonna insert my stitch marker into the sixth stitch from the top. And then from here, since we should all be along the bottom, we're going to do our sedge stitch all the way up until we have two stitches left right before our stitch marker. So we've made our way up with our middle row. We should all have two stitches left right before a stitch marker. And now we're going to finish off the row with a single crochet. So this is going to be pretty much the same. So what we're all gonna do from here is just skip that next stitch and then into the stitch right after that, which should be the stitch right before our stitch marker stitch. Insert with just one single crochet and now everyone's middle row is complete. Now once when this middle row is complete, what we're all gonna do is make a chain for the same amount of stitches that we skipped. So for those of you that have my numbers, I have skipped one, two, three, four, five, six. So I will now make a chain of six. And now that we have our chain, we're now going to do our following row. Since our following row is going to be an even number row, we are not going to be doing any increases or decreases. So all we're going to do is block off that last chain and do a chain one, then flip our work. Then into that chain that we blocked off for the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with our first sedge stitch, which remember is just a half double and double skip two stitches, and then do our next sedge stitch. Continue on with our normal non-increase sedge stitch row till we reach the end of the row. Then at the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, and then do our sedge stitch all the way down until we all have two stitches left, and then I'll meet you back so we can increase together. All right, so we are back, and our second row for the increase side is nearly complete. We all should have left the last two stitches. Now what we're gonna do is close off the row with an increase of four, half double crochets. So all we're gonna do is yarn over, skip that second to last stitch, and into the last, insert with four half doubles. So there is one, into that same last stitch with a second, same last stitch with a third, and then same last stitch with a fourth. And that's it. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have the same amount of rows as decrease rows that we have on this side, not including that one middle row that we have. Then I'll meet you guys back, which we should all end along the top, so we can finish up with our shoulder. Alrighty, we are back with the increased side of our neckline. I have the same amount of rows as the decrease rows, and now we're going to finish up with our shoulder. So we all should have ended along the top. And then once we do, we're all going to make a chain for the same amount of stitches that we skipped when we got started on our neckline. And for everyone, we all should have skipped a total of six stitches. So on this side, we're going to make a chain six. Then all we're gonna do is our sedge stitch rows with absolutely no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows that we have for this side of our shoulder portion. So let's just get started on the first set of stitches together. Since we should all have our chain by now, we're all going to block off that last chain, do a chain one and flip your work. Now from here, into that chain that we blocked off in the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with our first set, which is always going to be a half double and double crochet. And then from here, skip two chains into the next with a regular sedge stitch set. So single half double double and continue that, making our way all the way down, making sure that we close off the row with just one single crochet. Then we're just going to repeat that row with absolutely no increases and no decreases. And once we have the same amount of rows as our first shoulder portion, I'll meet you guys back right after we do a chain up of one and cut. And one last really quick tip. For this side of our shoulder portion, we should have the same amount of stitches for every row as chains that we made when we got started on this piece. Alrighty, we are back. The entirety of my front panel is complete. Now I have a total of 45 rows. My width is roughly 15 and a half inches or 39 centimeters. And I did do a chain up of one and cut right after my last row. Now from here, we're gonna get started on our back panel, but that's gonna be done pretty much the same way as our front panel, minus all of these increases and decreases in the middle. Now I already have my back panel complete, but all we're gonna do is make the same chain that we made when we got started on the front panel shoulder, then just do our sedge stitches with absolutely no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows as the front panel, so 45 rows for me. And then once we have the entirety of the back panel finished up, I'll meet you guys back so we can seam our shoulders together. 
All right, so now that both our front and our back panel are complete, we're ready to seam our shoulders. So first things first, we're going to place our front panel on top of our back panel, and we're gonna insert our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and back panel. Then we're going to pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Then from here, we're going to do a single crochet seam, putting one single crochet into every side row. So we're gonna start by finding our first side row within the front panel, this is mine right here. Find that top loop and insert. We're going to find that next side row within the back panel, this is mine right here. Find that top loop. And now we're going to single crochet around everything. Let's do that again. Into our following side row, find that top loop within the front panel. Into that following side row within the back panel, insert into that top loop. And single, and that's it. We're just gonna continue to single crochet into both the front and the back panel until we don't have any more side rows left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat what we did here on the other shoulder. We are back and our shoulder seam is complete. Now what we're going to do from here is our side seam. So first things first, we wanna make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out, meaning the seam that we have for the shoulder is along the outside. Then we're going to try on our piece, and then we're going to insert our stitch marker into any stitch that we have from the top, making sure that it is in multiples of three for the width that we'd like for our armhole to be. Now I've already measured mine out, I insert my stitch marker into the 21st stitch from the top, and that's roughly six inches or 15 centimeters, and that is within both the front and the back panel. Then we're gonna insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and back panel, and then do another single crochet seam. So we're gonna insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and start with a chain up of one to secure. Then we're gonna single crochet into both the front and the back panel at the same time. So finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert, first stitch into the back panel, insert, and single crochet them together. Again, next stitch into the front panel, insert, next stitch into the back panel, insert, and single, and that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we reach our stitch marker. When we do, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. So now that everything is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our bottom band. So first things first, we're gonna make sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up meaning all the seams that we just did are now along the inside, and then we're going to insert our hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the bottom of our piece. Then we're gonna pull through and start with a chain up of one just to secure, and all we're gonna do is put one single crochet into every side row. So start by finding our first side row, and this is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook in through that top loop with a single crochet. Again, this is my following side row, find that top loop, and insert with yet another single crochet, and that's it. We're gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way around, and then when we don't have any more side rows left to work into, slip stitch into that chain space. All right, so we are back. Our single crochet row along the bottom of our piece is completed, and now we're gonna get started on the bottom band length. So right after we have slip stitched into that chain space, we're all going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our bottom band to be. Now I'd like for mine to be roughly three inches or eight centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain 12. Now that we have our chain, we're gonna get started on our first row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. So we are going to insert our hook, yarn over and gently pull through both of those loops on our hook. So there's my first, there's my second. Again, into that next chain, insert, pull through both, and again, insert, pull through both. From here, continue with one slip stitch into every chain, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row can be too tight to work into. Now that we have our chain, we're now gonna slip stitch it into the base. So what we're gonna do is find that next available stitch into the base. Insert your hook, then yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. And that is our first row completed. And remember that that slip stitch into the base doesn't actually count as a stitch, that's just to connect. Then we need to work our way up to the following row. So slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. Still doesn't count as a stitch and flip our work. And then now we're gonna be doing back loop slip stitches. So start by finding that last stitch from our previous row, knot those slip stitches into the base and insert into that back loop only. Then yarn over and pull through both loops on our hook. Again, into that next stitch, insert into that back loop, yarn over and pull through both. And that's it. We're gonna continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, remembering not to tug too tightly again. And when we reach the end of the row, chain one, flip your work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and I'll meet you back at the base just once more. 
We are back. We now have the first one, two, three rows complete, and now we're going to connect it into the base together once more. So what we're going to do is find that next stitch into the base, insert with a slip stitch to connect this odd number row, remembering that that slip stitch doesn't actually count as a stitch, that's just to connect. Then since we're here, just to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, still doesn't count as a stitch, and flip our work. And from here, just continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And all we're going to do from here is continue to repeat our two previous rows until we don't have any more stitches into the base left to work into. When we don't, I'll meet you back so we can seam it all together. Alright, so we are back. We've made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches into the base left to work into, so now we're going to seam it together. Now this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam to make it look like another back loop slip stitch row. So we're all going to start by making sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up. Then we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then all we're going to do is yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. Then to do our seam, we're all going to start by finding that first stitch into the front panel and inserting only in through that front loop. Next, we're going to find that next stitch into the back panel and insert only in through that back loop. Then we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. Again, into that next stitch into the front panel, insert only into that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert only into that back loop, then yarn over and pull through all three. And that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. So now that our bottom band is completed, we're now going to get started on the sleeve. So first things first, we're going to make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up. Then we're going to be inserting our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam on our armhole and then we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook. Now from here we're all going to make a chain that is in multiples of three the length that we'd like for our sleeve to be. So you can make this a long sleeve, three quarter or short sleeve. So I'd like for my sleeve to be a short sleeve. So I'm going to start by making a chain six. That's roughly two inches or five centimeters but just for tutorial sake I'm actually going to make a chain nine just to make sure that we have all the stitches down. Now that we have our chain we're going to do our sedge stitch all the way back down. So this is going to be per usual. So just as a refresher, block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with our first sedge stitch, which is just a half double and double into that same stitch. Skip two stitches and then into the next is going to be our regular sedge stitch. So a single half double double into that stitch. Now we're going to continue to repeat this sedge stitch until we all have two chains left. Now the sedge stitch rows for the sleeves aren't going to have any increases or decreases. So what we're going to do to close off the row, instead of doing a single crochet into the last stitch when we only have two stitches left, we're going to do a half double crochet. And we're doing a half double crochet so that once we connect it into the sleeve, it's even along the edge and along the base. So what we're going to do is yarn over when we have two chains left. Into that last chain, we're going to insert with just one half double crochet. And now this row is complete. Now we're going to connect it into the base. So connecting it into the base, what we're going to do is count up the next two stitches into the base. There's one, there's two, and slip stitch it into that second stitch into the base. And now this row is complete. Then in order to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base, which is this one right here. Remembering that none of those slip stitches count as a stitch, flip our work. And now we're going to do our Suzette stitch row all the way down, making sure that we close off the row with a half double crochet instead of a single crochet. So just into that first stitch, do your first sedge stitch, and I'll meet you back when we have two stitches less, just to remind you that we're going to do a half double. We're now at the end of our row two. We should all have two stitches left. And into the last one, we're going to half double crochet. Now from here, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows. So just to do it together once more, chain one, flip your work, and then make your way down with your sedge stitch row, closing off the row with one half double crochet into that last stitch. We are back. We should all have one, two, nearly three rows completed. Now we're just going to connect it into the base. But remembering that the last stitch for every row within the sleeve is going to be a half double crochet and not a single crochet. So now what we're going to do from here it's slip stitch into that second stitch into the base. So there's one, there's two. Into that second stitch into the base, I'm going to insert with a slip stitch. 
and remember that slip stitch does not count as a stitch. Then to work our way up to the following row, find that next stitch into the base, insert into there with a slip stitch, flip our work, and then do our sedge stitch row all the way down, closing off the row with a half double. And that's it. From here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches into the base left to work into. When we don't, I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. We are back. We made our way all the way around with our rows for our sleeve and now we are complete because we don't have any more stitches left to work into. Now from here, we're going to seam it up together. So this is going to be a single crochet seam. So the same seam that we did for the sides. Since we already know how to do this, I'm just going to talk you guys through it. We're all going to start by making sure that our work is flipped wrong side out so the shoulder seam and the side seams should be faced outwards. Then single crochet into both the front and the back panel at the same time until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. And then repeat everything we did here on the other side. And now that both of our sleeves are all finished up, we're now going to get started on the collar. So first things first, we're all going to make sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up. And then we're going to insert our hook into the top corner stitch of the neckline that we have within the front panel. So to that top corner stitch where we have our slit. And now we're all going to do a single crochet row. Now what we're going to do working our way up our side rows within the front panel is we are going to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row. So we're going to pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now we're all going to start by finding our first side row and this is mine right here. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet. Then finding our following side row, this is mine right here. I'm going to insert my hook in through there with two single crochets. So there's one and then into that same top loop with a second. Let's do this again. Into that following row's top loop, insert with just one. And then into that following side row's top loop, insert with two singles. There's one. Into that same top loop, there is a second. And we are going to continue on with this, making our way all the way up until we reach the regular stitches that we have within the front panel, right before we get started into the back. So now that we've made our way up the front panel with our single crochets, we have a few more single crochets to work into. Now for this portion, right before we work into the back panel, it should be six single crochets for every size because that's the amount of stitches that we skip within the front panel. So just inserting into that next available stitch, insert with your first single, and then make your way back until we reach the back panel. So we've made our way all the way up until we have reached our back panel. And now we're going to put one single crochet into every side row. So let's just do the first few of those. So I'm going to flip my work. Now this is my first side row right here. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet into that following side row, insert into there with another single crochet. And we're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way down. Once we reach the front panel on the other side, one single crochet into every stitch, then into the side rows, alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row until we reach the slit top corner stitch. And then I'll meet you back. We are back. Our single crochet row along our neckline is complete. Now we're going to get started on the length of our collar. From where we're at, we're all going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our collar to be. So I'd like for mine to be just about three inches or eight centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain 12. Once we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain two. Now that chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Then from here, we're going to yarn over preparing for a half double crochet. Then into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook, we're going to insert with our first half double. So insert, pull through for three loops, yarn over, pull through all three and continue on with our half double crochet, putting one into every chain. Now that we've made our way down with our first half double crochet row, we're now going to connect it into the base. So finding that next stitch, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. That slip stitch does not count as a stitch. Then to work our way up to the following row, we're going to slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. Flip our work and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, remembering that none of those slip stitches into the base count as a stitch. So yarn over and in that first stitch is back loop with one half double. Next stitch is back loop with another half double. Continue on with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. Now at the end of the row, chain two, flip your work and then put one back loop half double into every stitch again and then I'll meet back at the base just so we can connect it together once more. So we are back. We should all have one, two, three rows nearly finished. Now we're going to connect it into the base and it's going to be done the same way. So start by finding that next available stitch into the base, insert, 
with a slip stitch. That slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch. And just to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. None of those slip stitches into the base count as a stitch. Flip our work and then put one back loop half double into every stitch. And that's it. From here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows, making our way all the way around until we worked into our last single crochet into the neckline single crochet row that we did. Once we're worked into there, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you back. All right, so we are back. We made our way all the way around with our collar. We don't have any more stitches left to work into, so we did do a chain up of one and cut, and we are actually all done. Last thing we're going to have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you all enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.